Okay. So, what's what's the story with this game? I like to think of chess games as some type of story. It helps me uh, get through. So basically attacking through the centre, we want to open up the centre and we're not into this control in the centre malarkey, just uh, get that off there. So that bishop really doesn't have a place there at all. So we need to then tell ourselves how do we get rid of that. Want to go on Kingside Castle, first of all, attacking a weak pawn. So that's the first part of the story. Second part of the story is I need to just kingside castle. King safety. That's my story about keeping my king safe or else I'm going to get checkmated. Simple as. So the next story is about attacking weak areas, weak pieces. Or if I can get to the king and smother the king, then go for the king first. Can't really see a smothercation at this moment in time. I know it's probably not a word. It's got like two pieces attacking this pawn here. So we want to just blunt that attack first of all. So that's the story so far. So we can bring our bishop back here. Keeping open, nice half open file for the queen. And just bring the bishop here. Don't want to block the queen, don't want to block the bishop's activity either. Nice stronghold on this diagonal coming across. In readiness for his bishop to start activating towards our king area. So now they're looking to go on kingside castle. So we're not going to rush anything at this moment. It looks like we need to sort our bed first. But I'm into attacking pieces. So this small piece attacking this um, bishop here it seems right to me. Then there's a combination of movements attacking the queen potentially before we've even developed these the knight and the bishop on the back here but that's oh my lord and we've got a fork with the pawn maybe they should have brought oh he's gone for a check nah don't laugh too early let's just move the king out of the way again i don't really like their dark square bishop i don't think it's functional in the way that it's been used so we need to just tell the story in the proper light we can now attack the queen again if we attack the queen what's going to happen they think they're being clever by doing slow movements towards our king area so we're not going to do that attack just yet until we've prepared our groundwork so we're going to bring the bishop here blocking the pawn but the bishop is protecting the pawn and then we can potentially push onto the queen so that's the story and I've got to be able to read the opponent's story as well so we'll continue with that action now so the queen can no longer put a check on our king so it's condensing their queen a little bit more so our little pawns at the minute we don't really expect them to survive but they're highly advanced up the board at the moment heading towards the king area to go for the smothering of the king if we can because like i said the story looks like the bishop is all by itself it's doing single attacks yes we could put this pawn onto the queen but then he's just going to take the pawn there so is there something that we can do in the meantime could bring the rook here supporting the pawn then we can push onto the queen i think we'll do that keeping it simple I think this pawn will push down because he's fearful that his queen is going to get trapped so this will push to try and get rid of this pawn or block this pawn so it might even be coming this far, far down to stop this form, pawn from pushing up so he's going for an attack this um, again I'm classing this as a useless bishop because it's doing these single attacks which at this moment in time I don't really see them gaining any ground because they're not working with the rest of the team 
So we can now push this pawn onto the queen like we said. And the queen's got activity to go and get itself caught. Because at this minute it can go here but it'll get taken. There it'll get taken. There it'll get taken. And there it'll get taken. So the dancing bishop. Ooh, interesting. I didn't actually see that. I'm there chomping away saying I've won the queen. Ah. <sighs> Now I have to reframe everything. I did not see that. Ah, uh, well. If we take the knight, obviously we're going to be a minor piece up. Are we? Yes, we are. Is his queen in a better position because he's on our bishop now? Interesting times. Let's take anyway and see what the story tells us. Because he's looking towards attacking our king area as best possible. Going to bring our queen just facing their queen, but also protecting the bishop. Because I got caught short there, um, I was surprised by the knight move, so they sacrificed their knight. So he's now looking for a pin through. An x-ray through to our rook. Can we block that off somehow? Can we intercept that particular move? going to bring the bishop down so that we're actually facing the queen the queen doesn't have any support on it tempo wise I mean if he drops the pawn we win his queen for free so I think the queen is probably going to take and then he can still get the extra through onto the rook but the bishop bishop is behind the rook so we could move up and attack his bishop that's easily defended because his pawn will push down but that's some sort of activity so they've moved the queen out of the way. The bishop can always go and attack it or we can attack the queen with the queen. So if the bishop goes and attacks it, he can go back again to that position. Let's just see if we can attack it because we're, we're a minor piece up so we can look to trade down. That's the idea behind the story here. Keeping it simple. His bishop here is all single at the moment. This bishop here is single by itself. The rooks are linked up, but they're not actually in the game presently. Our knight and our bishop aren't in the game at the moment, but the bishop is doing a good job because it is guarding and threatening this queen. It does take, so we'll capture. This pawn here is all by itself, uh, as we just said. And I was going to bring my bishop here, but if I bring it there, then his rook takes. And then we could take the pawn here with the bishop. He takes our rook, bishop takes, but then his rook is owning the file. So we have to be mindful of that. So I think just bringing the bishop here, looking to attack their dark square bishop, which has not been doing much in this game. Let's attack it now because he's looking to get settled he's doubling up his rooks onto the pawn as well he's not doubling his rooks up so let's move the king out of the way they're moving really fast now to try and catch me out yeah so they're trying to do the speed thing so just move the rook up one because i think we still want to hold on to this file And now they've slowed down because they've moved fast because they thought they'd catch me asleep, you see, and, and get my rook. So what's the story now? The story is the knight needs to get into the game. If the pawn takes, it helps us to develop the knight. If it doesn't, we need to get the knight into the game and look to put pressure onto this rook. The rook is in the centre of the board and there's no place for it. He's actually going to be looking for a double, so I've got to remember our bishop can take his rook there. So let's develop the knight like we said. So the story is looking a bit interesting for us at the minute. We don't really have any main targets per se. So he does capture. Let's capture back. Um, the only target we were focusing on was attacking this rook here. Now he's pushed his pawn down. We could take, but look at what he would have for free. He would have our rook for free. So we could take this pawn and put pressure on his rook for him to make a decision if the rook comes and attacks we can bring the bishop here to attack their rook 
it does capture so this pawn is like a pass pawn we have a pass pawn here on this side here and um, we could bring the bishop here just to basically protect it off or we could look to go and trade down which is what we wanted to do initially so the problem we've got is that is that his rook is looking to go here pinning the bishop and the knight so one of them would go and that would be a little bit of a waste really i think so i think we can go and attack this pawn pawn will drop down but it can't because the bishop has got an x-ray through to his king so his rook may drops here yep pawn can drop onto the um rook the rook doesn't have a safe place to go to on that side so he'll probably have to go back up again So these single movements that the opponent's making, the story is um, looking fairly strong for us at the moment. Got to be careful we don't get ourselves pinned. The knight comes across, captures this pawn. We really want to get our rook activated, but I think it's going to come flying over towards the bishop here, like we've just said. Pawn can then go and protect the bishop. If bishop takes... Knight bishop takes and then his rook comes down to maybe that don't look too good because his rook is going to end up here so could we defend with the rook keep it simple so this is an interesting story actually it's not a bad story to be watching so he's got a two on one so we can bring the pawn here for a two on one protection of the bishop can expect this pawn to drop onto the knight but it might be sending the knight to somewhere vicious maybe or maybe not so you have to be careful with these situations because as i've said before when opponents have got like a ma ooh, he's not forced to take is he no it doesn't have to take our rook he's probably going to come here to attack this pawn Oh, it's not. So we'll capture. And it's on my knight. So let's go and put pressure on this pawn. And the problem we've got is he's got these three linked pawns here, which he could mosey on down, but now he's given us a bit of space for this pawn. It maybe gives his king something to think about. Maybe. Yeah, let's push. Because we've got two passes, two passes or two pass pawns, and it looks like the opponent may have may be leaving the game. The signal seems to have disappeared. Damn, that was a lovely story. A lovely story of single pieces can't really do it by itself. Like the bishop, the activity of the opponent's bishop. Um, it was like stuck in no man's land coming around doing its bits the queen was by itself um, the white square bishop was by itself the rooks didn't really work together put the rook in the center of the board and really didn't have a place so yes we'll claim victory on that so in essence the moral of the story is work your pieces together as a team